When it launched a decade ago, the original iPhone was widely criticized by power users. It cost about as much as the competition, but it lacked essential features that had come to define the smartphone. Nevertheless, the iPhone succeeded, partly because it was willing to redefine what it meant to be a smartphone. The analogy to Google's Pixelbook is imperfect. This is not the first Chromebook, nor is the laptop market of today as ripe for a shakeup as the smartphone world of 2007. But the Pixelbook does strike me as the notebook of the future, in the same way the original iPhone proved in many ways to be. I'm Michael Fisher, and I've used the Google Pixelbook for two weeks. Join me for the Mr. Mobile Review. If you're not familiar with Chromebooks, you might not understand the widespread resistance to the Pixelbook's $1,000 price tag. I mean, after all, this is a stunning piece of hardware, ultra slim and super lightweight, with a hinge that lets it serve as a laptop, tablet, and all convertible modes in between. Those fuzzy feelings continue across the keyboard, which is very comfortable to type on, thanks in large part to the soft touch silicone palm rests. At least I think it's silicone. Whatever it is, it feels great. The trackpad is also quite good, and the display is as crisp and colorful as you could ask for, with good touch response and only a little hinge wiggle. The spec sheet packs all the power you could reasonably expect in a body this slim, and Google also put lots of thought into the little details of everyday use. There's a dedicated key for Google Assistant, which is a nice convenience, and the same soft touch material from the palm rests also finds its way into strips on the bottom of the casing, keeping the Pixelbook anchored firmly to a tabletop. In some ways, the hardware alone justifies the price. It's the operating system that gives people pause. Chrome OS is widely known in the education market, where it's absolutely on fire. It claimed about 60% of the K-12 market in 2016, stealing enough share from Windows that Microsoft felt compelled to respond with the Surface Laptop, which retails for about the same price as the Pixelbook. The key difference is that the Surface Laptop comes with Windows 10, a much more powerful operating system that can run almost the full catalog of Windows programs, a legacy stretching back for decades. By contrast, Chrome OS until recently was well, basically just the Chrome browser with very little third-party app support. That's a big part of why Chromebooks have historically been so inexpensive for the most part. They're widely perceived as less capable. But here's the thing. Unless I'm editing video, I spend almost all of my time on a laptop in Chrome anyway. And when I do need to use native software these days, it's usually an app on my smartphone. That's relevant because the latest version of Chrome OS lets you run Android apps right on the Pixelbook. That right there closes a big gap in functionality and makes this operating system a lot more capable for anyone who doesn't really need the power or compatibility of an older OS. It's also really fast. I only have the mid-range trim level with an Intel Core i5 and eight gigs of RAM, but not even running more than 15 tabs and a handful of native apps at the same time can slow this system down, at least not to a degree that I detect. One of my favorite things, weirdly, is the update mechanism. See, when Chrome OS needs to update, it doesn't lock you out for 20 minutes to do it. Instead, it downloads the update in the background to a dedicated partition. The first you hear about it is when it's ready to switch over. A little window pops up, you tap it, and a 15 second reboot later, you're running the new version. Oh, and if you carry an Android phone, you can skip the password when logging in. Just unlock your phone when you're near the Pixelbook and it too will unlock, most of the time. Chromebooks are known for good battery life and the Pixelbook does pretty well here considering its powerful processor and high res display. On average, I managed to get about six hours of continuous use per charge with brightness at about three quarters and about 10 Chrome tabs and three or four Android apps running at any given time. The charging brick that comes in the box with the Pixelbook will top it off very rapidly, and so will a battery pack that offers USB power delivery, like this one. Of course, I do have some complaints. Running Android apps in Chrome OS is still very much a work in progress. These apps are not designed to run on a canvas of this size, and many of them aren't expecting a physical keyboard either. 
So there are bugs and hiccups that make the whole thing feel a little hacky. I've also seen Chrome twice just crash to a black screen, which is pretty jarring. On the hardware side, while the Pixelbook is pretty svelte for a laptop, it's pretty hefty for a tablet. Also, for the price, Google really could have thrown in a bigger display instead of these huge bezels, and it could have included the $100 pen in the box, too. The speakers get loud enough, but there's no bass to speak of. You definitely want to use Bluetooth or the 3.5mm headphone jack. An irritating trend in 2017 has been the prevalence of technology that does too little and asks too much from your wallet. Speaking as someone who grew up with Windows and then Mac OS, the Pixelbook does feel like one such overpriced example. But I'm not the target market, and if you're still in the habit of roasting Chrome OS as just a glorified browser, you aren't either. The Pixelbook is for people like the millions of students who this coming spring will wrap up their early education knowing Chrome OS better than any other operating system. Some of those students, flush with loan money on their way to college, will want an alternative to a MacBook or Surface that's built just as well as those. It's also for people like the developers building apps for Chrome and Android, and whatever operating system might come from their eventual convergence. And it's for people who prefer Chrome OS for other reasons, and rightly, don't feel like they should be confined to mid-range hardware. For all these people, the Pixelbook will serve wonderfully. For everyone else, the more affordable options aren't going anywhere. This video was brought to you by Mr. Mobile. I'm grateful to say that the YouTube channel is closing in on a half million subscribers, but I'm going to need a few more if I have to keep buying Pixelbooks for review. So please, encourage people to subscribe to The Mr. Mobile on YouTube, and for a quicker and sometimes crazier look at mobile tech, follow me on Instagram at the same handle. Until next time, thanks for watching, and stay mobile, my friends.